So hello everyone. So this is Hao Jiexu from Fuzhou University. So I'm very glad to give a talk here. And the title of my talk is the neutron skin determinations via isobar collisions. So this is the outline of my talk. So first I will discuss the nuclear structure of isobars, and then I will focus on how to probe the neutron skin thickness and also the nuclear symmetry energy using isobar collisions. And then is the summary. So let's go to the first part of my talk, the nuclear structure of isobars. So as the goal of this program, we're trying to make a connection between the nuclear structure and the uh, relatively heavy ion absorbers of the final state. So this is the time evolution of heavy ion collisions. We collide the two nucleus at high energy. We create a hot and dense medium uh, with the confirmed uh, quark and gluons, which is a quark gluon plasma. After uh, expansion and freeze out, we got to the final absorbers. So actually, there is one very well known connection between the initial special and isotropy and then the uh, uh, and the final isotropic of momentum distribution, which is called isentropic flow. So uh, usually people use these properties to study the bug property, uh, uh, these uh, uh, connections to study the bug properties of the QGP mediums, like the uh, shear viscosity, the bug viscosity, and so on. So uh, uh, in the main goal of this program, and also my talk is trying to extract or study the nuclear structure. So uh, basically people use the Wood Saxon distribution to describe the nuclear densities like this, and they have some parameters like the diffusionist parameters, the radius parameters, and also deformation parameters like beta two, beta four, and so on. So in this talk, I will discuss the isobar collisions, and uh, you hear a lot about the isobar in, in this week. And uh, the isobar was proposed to measure the carrier magnetic effect, and Fu Qiang have a very nice talk on that. And also in the previous speaker, uh, Gu Liang gave a very uh, nice introduction of the carrier magnetic effect. So in short, in isobar collisions, people expect that the zirconium zirconium collision and the ruthenium ruthenium collision will have the same background related to the uh, geometry because they have the same mass number, so people expect they have the same uh, 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 collision geometry at the same centrality. But they, uh, the ruthenium have four more protons than the corneum, so it will create a large magnetic field in ruthenium ruthenium collisions, so they will have a larger CME signals. So if we look at the ratios between the uh, of the CME observers between ruthenium ruthenium collisions and the zirconium zirconium collisions, people original expectation is that this ratio should be larger than one if we have some contributions from CME. But uh, as you know, last year Star have published the first result of the isobar uh, the CME measurement in isobar collisions. You will see that all the ratios are below uh, than one and uh, <clears throat> the below to one means that the background are not identical. We know the background uh, are not identical because the corneum a lot of ruthenium, they have some structure differences. But in previous study, people trying to use the chart density to, um, to, to see the uh, isobar differences related to the CME uh, 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 measurement. So they use the uh, Wood Saxon parameters extracted from the chart density distributions. Uh, and the parameters are listed in this table. And they calculate the, the multiplicity distribution ratio on the left, and also the eccentricity ratio on the right, which is uh, related to the elliptic flow ratio. And these two are main uh, contributions for the CME background showing in this uh, formula. So if we, if we look, focus on the long central collisions, which uh, here in the middle, uh, multiplicity range, you will see that uh, the multiplicity distribution and also the intricity are almost uh, similar for the two systems. So this is a uh, good news for the uh, CME search in Asuba. But uh, you know, as I shown in the previous slide, uh, the start data tell us that uh, the background are not identical. And uh, uh, we trying to ask why they uh, have some differences and uh, what is missing in their studies. Actually, before the isobar runs, we also already realized that the charge density cannot be used in the isobar simulations. And 
the the answer for the previous uh, slide uh, is of uh, question the of previous slides is that the charge density is the new new not nuclear density, and this is uh, obviously. But uh, normally in relativistic heavy collisions, uh, we always use uh, we normally use the charge density instead of nuclear density for our simulations. One of the reasons is that uh, you, we know that the charge density can be measured uh, precisely in nuclear experiments. So we uh, typically use the charge density as input in uh, hydro in hydro or some uh, heavy ion, uh, ha relative to heavy ion, uh, simulations. <coughs> but in our isobar uh, simulations, I will show you that uh, this is, uh, these differences cannot be neglected. Since uh, the uh, mass density or nuclear density cannot be well uh, very easy to measure, the, but we do have some fundamental theory to calculate it. So in our study in 2017, we use the energy density function theory to calculate the, the proton and the neutron densities of ruthenium and zirconium. And in this uh, uh, plot, uh, we should uh, make a comparison between the DFT calculated nuclear density and uh, the Ulu Saxon parameters, the uh, charge density. They do have some differences. And the most important, uh, we are showing you to you that uh, they have some very different prediction on the CMG related background. And uh, in here, uh, which I show in the predictions with different set of uh, nuclear density. On the left panel, I show in the predictions with charge density. And uh, on the right panel, we show in the, I show in the predictions with the DFT calculated nuclear densities. So if we look, uh, focus on the top panel, this is the multiplicity distribution ratio. You will assume, uh, see that uh, the multiplicity distribution ratio uh, predicts with charge density have low uh, uh, differences at mid central uh, centrality, but at most central centrality, the ratio is, is below than one. But for the DFT uh, calculated density, the prediction is that we see a very uh, obvious uh, long trivial bump structure at mid central collisions. And for the most essential collisions, the ratio is above one, not uh, below than one. And uh, also, if we uh, focus on the Neuer panel, this is the eccentricity differences between the two systems. On the left is the prediction with the charge density. You can see that at non-central collisions, uh, the ratios are more close uh, to zero. The relative differences are more close to zero. And they have differences and most essential collisions are uh, mainly due to the uh, nuclear deformation. And uh, in our DFT calculated uh, nuclear density, uh, we predict that the, uh, the uh, eccentricity ratio or the V2 ratio have a long trivial bump structure at long central collisions. And the differences could be as large as 3% here. And uh, <clears throat> we have, now we have the uh, uh, star uh, data and uh, the data, uh, 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 and with the data comparison, we found that the TFT predict, uh, pre the DFT predictions are verified by the star data. Uh, on the left plot, I show the multiplicity distribution ratios, and we can see a very clear lump bump structure here and can be described by the DFT, uh, by the calculations with DFT calculated the nuclear densities here. And also the V2 uh, ratios at the long central collision is uh, 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 have a long uh, trivial bump structure. And if we focus on the multiplicity distribution ratio at most central collision or a high multiplicity range, you will see the ratio is above than one, not below than one uh, predicted by the charge density. So let me first explain why they have differences on the predictions with the different set of uh, nuclear parameters. So if we talk about the nuclear uh, charge density distribution or the proton density distribution, actually it can be well uh, uh, measured by uh, the new low energy nuclear experiment. And the uh, experiment is the, the, the uh, uh, measurement tell us that the ruthenium have a larger charge size than the cornea. But if we talk about the nuclear uh, density or the mass density, we should uh, talk about, we should uh, uh, include the uh, differences between the neutron distribution and the proton distribution. And it can be just, uh, characterized by the neutron skin thickness. It's defined like this, is the IMS differences between the neutron 
uh, the distribution and the proton distribution. And the DFT tells us that the zirconium have a larger neutron skin than ruthenium. So if we include considering the neutron distribution and the proton distribution differences, and we see that the mass size for ruthenium is smaller than zirconium. And in heavy collisions, if the two systems have the same total entropy or energy, the, the smaller overlap range or smaller size indicate a larger density. They will create a larger multiplicity and also mean PT. So that's why with the prediction of the DFT calculates the nuclear density, we have the ratio of ruthenium ruthenium over zirconium zirconium for the multiplicity distribution uh, is uh, ab above one. But if we use the charge density, the ratio is below than one. So let's also uh, explain the next uh, differences of the predictions, why the DFT character nuclear density uh, shown a very obvious non-trivial bound structure for both the multiplicity distribution ratio and also the V2 ratios. So we know in the uh, Wood Saxon preparation framework, uh, we have two ways to introduce the neutron skin. One is the skin type, another is the hero type. Uh, for the skin type, we see that uh, the proton density and the neutron density have the same diffusionist parameters A, but the radio parameters R are, are different. But for the hero type nuclear, we see that uh, the proton density and the neutron density have a different uh, uh, diffusion use parameters, but the uh, reduced parameters R is the same. So in this study, we construct uh, two different uh, neutron skin for the zirconium. One is a skin type and another is a hero type. And then we calculate the multiplicity distribution ratio uh, shown in the middle panel and the eccentricity ratio shown in the uh, right panel. You will see that only the hero type nuclear can predict a long trivial bump structure at a long central collisions. So the shape of the ruthenium ruthenium over the zirconium zirconium ratios of the uh, multiplicity and eccentricity in middle central collisions can distinguish between the skin type and hero type nuclear densities. So that's also another interesting thing that about the charge density is not the nuclear density. So if we look at the cross-section of the photon production of the dilepton, um, you will see the, the cross-section is only related to the charge densities. But when we make some baseline prediction of the uh, photon production uh, dielectron cross section in our study, we will, we will focus on some centrality, for example, for the 40 to 80 percent centrality. So, although the cross section is not uh, 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 related to the mass density, but the centrality definition do depend on the mass density. So we found that if we use the charge density to define centrality, we will give a very different prediction of the a ratio of, uh, of uh, um, dielect dielectron the cross section between ruthenium and zirconium. So now we know the uh, neutron skin or the nuclear structure can affect the uh, final observable in answer collisions. So the natural question is can we use these uh, final observables to determine the nuclear structure of the isobars? So this is the. Uh, 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 let's you, go. Can you go, uh, go back to the next slide? Okay. Uh, Okay, so what, what, why is that different? Uh, also, the PT, PT dependent shape is it reason? I mean, simple way to understand that. So we use the same uh, charge density. Uh, uh, the cross section is only related to the charge density. So the calculation of the cross section is the same for the two cases, but uh, the centrinal definition is different. For the uh, for the left panel, we use the DFT calculate the nuclear density to calculate the centrinity for both the ruthenium and the zirconium. And if on the right panel, we should, we use the charge density, only use the charge density to give a prediction of the ratio. What, what, what the PT dependence coming from what? There's some ratio, there's a different PT dependence shape. On the left is like overall, like offset of 10%, the other is like, no This is com group. coming from the different, which means uh, if you, uh, uh, in other words, the multiplicity range are different between the two, 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 two system, and the multiplicity, the the PT distribution is depend on the multiplicity, so that's why they have different, uh, uh, different uh, behavior of the ratio. It's the centrality definition, basically. Yes, the difference from the centrality definition. 
And uh, the PT distribution is dependent on the multiplicity, also the centrality, or in other words, centrality. I, I have a question about the previous uh, discussion. So where you, you sort of conclude about the halo. Yeah. I mean, there, uh, there are big differences in the diffuseness between protons yes. and neutrons, but by no means as big as to, you know, to, to account for the skin. So why do you think this is good? I mean, um, this sort of, it's, I, I don't think there's any evidence on the structure side for, for the skin being due to the diffusion. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I'm uh, understanding your question. Uh, I mean, you, you have here three cases. Neutron, yes. Neutron skin, skin by the shifting of the radii, and then skin by changing the diffuseness. No, the halo changed by the diffuseness. So whatever you call it, halo. Yes. The, the skin is not due to halo. It, um, skin, is, we can vary the diffusiveness I, of the radio. I hope that you can vary it and you get this result, but I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. it doesn't bring a confirmation of anything from structure. It's just an, an excursion. It's still another direction. It, it appears that, it, uh, it appears that, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, uh, the structure that you captured can be captured by A naught in this particular quantity. I, I know, but it is not because it's inconsistent with what you know from structure. What we know from structure? Well, we know fr from structure, you know, that there's basically a change in R, there's some change in A, but it's not big. So what's the percentage of the contribution? I can look yeah, or something, but it's, it's basically changing now. It's uh, so what I think what Hodge did here is that mm -hmm. he took the calculation. I, I know, and, I know, and, I understand. And, and what what I know, I yeah. know, but I mean, uh, yes. anyway, yeah, I just go ahead. I mean, yeah, this is just a comment. Just um, go ahead and cut off. So let's explain a little bit. Since we use the same F for proton because the proton distribution can be measured precisely in experiments. So then we can construct it. Right, you don't know nothing about nuclei and you can change anything and it will be valid. Yeah, this is the two extreme cases to change it, to give the neutron skin. So I, I mean the data favor a skin type, a hero type, not means that this is exactly a hero type. They so have some the results. Results. Then, yeah. then I can say it's a positive result. But um, Hoji, this this cartoon you where you get this cartoon is from some theory from nuclear structure, right? Or, yeah, yes. They uh, just uh, in a, a, a very a very simple uh, in a situation uh, of uh, which one is the skin type, which one is the hero type. Yes. It's very unlikely that this nuclei have a hello. Here we have a large tail distribution. Yeah, in the in the in the value of the stability. Right. So I don't think this is hello. But it appears that uh, well, if you if you keep the a naught to be the same, then you cannot explain the data. So the a yes. A not have to be different. Then, I mean, know, yeah, then I you know. have to look for some Okay, but they <laughs> not is different. Probably both in order for proton and neutron, they are all small. That's just small. It's not like only the neutron. It's small. So they both have become sharper. I think uh, A is this. Presumably, A for neutrons is a bit smaller than proton. Yeah, it's just small. Okay, could be. Okay. So, so that could be it, right? Right, but it's the other direction than the, you know, the, the data suggests. No, no. His data doesn't control, constrain proton and neutron separately. What matters no, always it's the a relative. So if he yeah. puts a, a short uh, larger A not for the quantum, yes. For the neutron, yes. Uh, uh, appears to explain data. 
So, so, so the, his values, right? The R A will obtain a will obtain from the DFT densities. Just do a what is X in polarization of the density. Right, but um, so the halo type came from DFT. Yes, I believe so. But so how come you can change the right of uh, this the two types of skins in DFT? How, how do you get it? The what? The... I mean, if it's DFT, DFT shouldn't be such a lot. Oh, sorry, in this night we <coughs> in this night we didn't use the DFT calculator nuclear density. We just uh, make a uh, 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 ex example test. Uh, so for the new uh, hair type, uh, oh, okay. skin hair type. For the DFT calculations, uh, we use the, the first uh, second moment of R to extract R and A. And also this extraction indicated that the, the, the DFT calculator nuclear density is also herotype. Yeah. DFT also gives you density, right? That you don't need to fit with anything. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. There, there's no physics that would give a halo for within DFT for this nuclear. Yeah. I, I, I missed a link here. So the so you can use the density from calculation and yes. do all these uh, yes. calculation and yes. that's yeah. what uh, Hodge got as well yes. that's yeah. yes and i thought Hodge, that you took the density uh the calculate the density <laughs> and use water saxon formula to fit that to get those parameters well, you just and, the moment. yeah yeah we we, the moments, we, we already do that but not showing in this oh, slide yeah yeah Fit but the moments. Moments you have uh, you have two parameters and just one moment, right? So you can trade it this way or that way. We, we use the first moment and the IMS, the second moment to extract R and A. So, so and is, is the plot A is that the actual result of, of the, the fitted values? It, it is on the left plot A, is that the actual neutron uh, distribution? This is just a illustration, illustration of how to extract, uh, construct a neutron skin and see the effect for the relaxed heavy ion absorbers. It's not, not a, related wait, to the real density. Your numbers are from the calculation or not? I, no, I just, that, just for uh, uh, illustration, not from calculations. Oh, okay. We, we, we also we also do the calculations, but uh, from the DFT calculation densities, but not shown in this slide. Oh, okay, okay. But the, the results are similar. The DFT calculator, if we use the Ulusaxon preconization to go get the R and A, we also see they have small differences in R, but uh, not differences in but the. And the prediction are similar to the hair time. Only get three percent for the halo, right? What do you get when you take directly the uh, DFT densities without with X parameters terrorizing them and then take the ratio of these observers? Uh, this is my precision ratio from the DFT calculated nuclear density and compared to the star data here. So this is without this is without uh, with X and feeding it. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, uh, um, from the real uh, nuclear density. And from the nuclear density from this slide are not uh, just an illustration the difference between the skin and hair type nuclear. So this is not really. But, but, uh, so then maybe uh, in another direction. So are you claiming that you can tell the difference in density distribution from DFT and wood saxon? I cannot. If we use the first and second momentum to extract R and, and we will give the similar prediction on the mal, at least for the multiplicity distribution ratio and institution ratio, they are similar. So we cannot uh, distinguish <coughs> two, <coughs> two cases. Yeah. I was, uh, I was initial puzzled by that. Okay. I thought, I thought you would see some of the differences. Oh, yeah, but if you could, I mean, it's important, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, can I please continue. Yeah, so, so, so for the for the uh, picture A, why the skin type and the halo type they are the difference be between neutron spin are same for very The some of the halo type would be larger. Sorry. Uh, I mean the skin type, the difference is equals to, according to zero point one two Fermi. 
kind of type still uh, 0 0.12 for me. That's mm -hmm. an imposed constraint that, yeah. they, uh, that he imposes. This is not calculated, this is imposed. Uh, I think it's uh, different between red and blue in the bottom part. Uh, it's, uh, they're different, but on one side the one way and the other side the other way. So let's move to the second part of my talk. Then I will focus on how uh, to probe the neutron skin signals and the nuclear signature energy using the isobar data. So, <clears throat> so as I said, the zirconium have a larger neutron skin than ruthenium. This is because the neutron skin are, are simply related to the neutron, uh, uh, neutron uh, proton asymmetry and the zirconium have a larger neutron proton asymmetry in here. But uh, uh, more seriously, we can use uh, some uh, fundamental uh, nuclear structure uh, theory to calculate. So we use the uh, density function theory and uh, with the schemo uh, hydrofork uh, model. And uh, this uh, is related to the symmetry energy. And uh, one of the most important parameters is the slope parameters of the symmetry energy is defined here. And we can uh, cue to the uh, L value at the acceleration density, rho zero and also the subsidiary density, rho c. And if we have a larger L value, then we have a harder equation of state, which we need means we need a smaller delta to noise the energy. So we have a smaller neutron density. So we have a larger neutron skin. Actually, people find that the neutron skin and the L parameters have very good linear relations shown in this slide, in this plot. So the symmetry energy, as you know, is crucial to our understanding of the masses and the drop lines of neutron and rich nuclear and the equation of states of nuclear and neutron star matter. So we know uh, currently the PEREX2 collaboration have published their measurement of the neutron skin of the benchmark nuclear lead. They gave a larger neutron skin thickness and a larger L parameters compared to the worldwide data. And this is at attention with the existing experimental data and zero analysis. And if our relativistic heavy inclusions can give some information of the L parameters, and it would be useful. So to make a connection between the uh, neutron skin or nuclear symmetry energy to our heavy ion observables, we calculated the nuclear density for ruthenium and zirconium at different L values. And uh, the model we used is the uh, standard SHF model and also the extended SHF model, which means we effectively include the three body uh, uh, potentials. And uh, this table shows the L values at different, uh, the LC value uh, with different value and the, the corresponding L value, the neutron skin for the corneum, for lucinium, and also for lead. You can see, uh, see in this slide uh, plot that the neutron skin for both the lucinium, the corneum, and the lead have, have a good linear re, uh, relation to the LC values here. We have three values, 20, uh, 47, and 70. So then we calculate the nuclear density and the input uh, take it as input in our model study to discuss the final observables. The first uh, sensitive can you, observable. Uh, can you go to the, this extended? Uh, okay. The term that they added is, to, is, is, is for what's the physics? What's the physics uh, terms? As far as I think it's the effective three body in action. Uh, is it body action? There were already some three body interaction, right? The last term, for example. I mean, I, but this, the, what, what is this additional uh, term? Like, what kind of physics uh, are included here? I think uh, uh, discussed with others is that they include the more three body interactions here. It's the mean field. Uh, here, it's the kind of the mean field. Yeah. Approximation here, right? There. Yeah, yeah, but the, the, which, I which, just want to know the three body, there are many different uh, ways. So effectively. It. Yeah, I think uh, if we use the effective uh, density, well, uh, the, uh, 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 mean field. So it's not really a three body interaction. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they must have some origin, like momentum dependence or, you know. So, okay, my question is you know, the people, if I understand, you know, the PRF data, right, this large neutron skin. Mm -hmm. In the traditional the DFT, if they use the symmetry energy, let's say 50 or 70 MeV, 
they were not able to. Yeah, they were still not uh, able to. Yeah, you should show here still far away from the PREX data. Is this because you add these extra terms, which even keeping the same L, you can still describe it? I mean, would this this will be very different from other approaches, right? So uh, you should compare the LC value here. The the LC yeah. value is seventy one. Right. So. So I'm compared to the other DFT approaches, which does not have these extra terms, you will have some systematic uh, is that, is that right? differences. I'm, I'm asking you. I don't know. I don't know either. So no, I mean, no. even with the extended actual terms, they still cannot get that even. Okay, but I go back to the to previous slide, the, the one you showed. Uh, no, no, sorry, forward. The way you showed the, yeah, look, they, they actually are reaching the, the prediction is right on top, right, of the PREX. Yes. For the lead. It's one sigma. Yeah. No, not one sigma. The, the open black is sitting on top of the, the, the black. You actually are describing the PREX data. 70. With 70. No, but with this, with no, this uh, L, you normally get to. That, that's the typical. I don't think this is very different than the other. Mm -hmm. But other people cannot. The, the, the PRS data is always about their prediction. If I remember. Yes, when we we doing this study, the PRS results are not uh, coming yet. So it's it's seventy, right? So it's uh, we it's, use seventy instead of seventy one from PRS. Right. Uh, Others don't so use seventy. So you use from, smaller values. So from yes. from PRX two, they get seventy pretty much. Uh, the construction typical construction of scarab is such that you cannot get large L values, you run out of L values. So most scarab interactions, which are not weird, will end up around 80, 90, that will be it. And then you have some wacko ones that go 120 or something. It's, it's an inherent to the I see. So, so in the scare model, you cannot get a uh, uh, large reduction of scan no matter what you think uh, yes. at some point, right? But if you go to the relativistic formulations, mm -hmm. usually you have the opposite. You get big, you cannot get small skins. So there is a gap actually, or it's somewhere wrong okay. in your slides. But it's a time to the parameterization. It's not clear how isostream comes through. This looks like some momentum dependence, I think. but there is a momentum dependence over the area. Right. You mean there is momentum dependence in the uh, SHF? <coughs> this, this, in the this K, K looks like gradient you know, momentum. Yeah, the, the, what's in the red box according to the one is momentum dependent. Uh, so weakness of the normal curve is just the, the moment of the dependence of the original is just quadratic. Mm -hmm. So you only change effective mass, but the, the moment of dependence is it's more complicated. So this maybe this accomplishes that. Yeah, I assume this is trying to make it stiffer. It's, it's like stiffer yeah. and in a more sophisticated manner, more realistic manner. But it's, uh, I don't, you, there's no isospeed here. It's, it's <clears throat> okay, yeah, so yeah. you can just go on. So let me continue. So then the, the, we discussed some sensitive observable. Firstly, it's the multiplicity due to ring ratio, as I already introduced them. So we, Found that the multiplicity distribution ratio between ruthenium, ruthenium, and the corneal, the corneal, you will see that in this plot. And uh, if the L value is larger, the deviation from unity is larger at most central collisions. So to quantify these differences, uh, we propose the uh, uh, observable, there's the relative differences of the mean multiplicity between ruthenium, ruthenium, and the corneal, the corneal at top 5% centrality. And then you can see that this R value have a very good linear relation to the uh, neutron skin of isobars. And uh, the, in this plot, the each uh, uh, curve corresponding to the uh, different model studies. And we use uh, several models, the MPT, 
two versions, uh, the uh, default version and uh, the uh, stream mapping version, and also the YARCMD, the hygiene. We also include the initial models like the Trento Global to calculate the, the, the relation between R and the neutral skin of uh, isobar. And you can see that uh, all the trends are uh, for uh, all the results are following the similar trend. And since we can get the R values from the data, we can use this method to extract the L values and also the um, neutral skin of isobars. So since the R is a relative measure, so it's a much of the experimental effect and the systematic uncertainty are cancer. So this is the first method we proposed. And the second method we proposed is a mean PT ratios. And it's similar to the uh, multiplicity between ratios, since uh, if the two systems have the same total entropy or energy density, a smaller size will, uh, will give a larger mean PT. So ruthenium should be have a larger mean PT than uh, the corner corner collisions. So the, a, a very interesting thing for the mean PT is that we know the mean PT are affected by the bug property of the QGP mediums. If you uh, focus on the top panel of this uh, plot, you will see that the mean PT for the corner the corner collisions uh, uh, do depend on the bug, bug viscosity or the shear viscosity in the hydrodynamic simulations. But if you take the ratio between the two systems, you will see that uh, this ratio are quite robust. It's independent of the, uh, 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 it's almost independent of the shear viscosity and the bug viscosity, which means uh, they are independent of the uh, detail of the uh, QGP evolutions. So we will give a very, uh, very go uh, good uh, um, features to probe the nuclear structure in the initial state. So actually, we give, uh, plot uh, the mean PT ratio and uh, the, uh, the, 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 the transverse size of the collision areas. We find that the mean PT ratio is inversely uh, proportional to the nuclear size ratio in the most central collisions. And uh, we know the mean PT ratio can be measured very precisely uh, in uh, heavy end data. And uh, we can also use this method to get the, uh, 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 the, the neutron skin and also the uh, slow parameters of the symmetry energy. But yeah, in this calculation, if I remember, the, the you use a large nuclear width, right? I, I don't remember. Yes, like yes. Like one frame bigger than one frame, right? This uh, width is from the base uh, analysis. So it's a jet scape. It's like one, one, one Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. But, but you know, the, it, it, we also see if you use a very large width, you tend to reduce the mean PP ratio. In other words, the, the, the radio flow response is actually got a little bit diluted and you, you can get a good agreement. But if you use the nuclear width, which is typically constrained by other observable, which prefer like 0 0.5, then this ratio will be much higher. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a typical feature. If you use a, use a, a nuclear, smaller nuclear width, then this, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, predicted, uh, you know, the, the mean PD ratio. But you mean the nuclear width will have a very... Very, yeah, very big effect on this. So the, 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 the mean PD... The V2 PT. Uh, we do PT correlation prefer small width, and this actually prefer large width. But the V two PT observable is a correlation of fluctuation observables. Yeah, yeah sure. It's a different mean value. It's quite different. But but uh, also you know, uh, uh, the uh, the 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 trajectum you know this study by Wilkie and uh, and uh, Howard when they when they also include the cross section like constraint the. Uh, uh, the total cross section of the heavy ion collision to match the experimental data, and they also prefer a small cross, small sigma, small width. That was shown last week. Right? We had so I remember. I there are many, many observables which one yeah. somewhat prefer small uh, nuclear waves, and others prefer large waves, like this observable. Yeah, yes. Thank you for the suggestion. Maybe we can um, say if there's some. Differences that will change the nuclear weights in the mean PT calculation. There's some, there's some computation between different observables. That's something that. Uh, yeah, yes. That. Yes, thank you. So actually, we have already applied this method to the star data. So this is slide showing the star preliminary results on the uh, multiplicity distribution ratio and the mean PT ratio to extract the L parameters. So uh, the uh, top panel shows the uh, multiplicity distribution ratio and uh, use the mean multiplicity uh, uh, 
differences, uh, um, we can extract the L value, LC value here. The way we do it is that we calculate the mean multiplicity ratios at uh, from the model with LC equal to 20, MEV uh, 47 and 70, and we get three uh, points. And then we use the experimental data to extract the, uh, the L value corresponding to the um, uh, 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 experimental results. And uh, also, in a similar way, we get uh, the values from the mean PT observables. You can see that the two values, two LC values, are quite consistent with each other. Of course, if we use uh, L instead of LC, we can also extract uh, the L values uh, related to this method. So now we can compare with, uh, we, we can also compare with these uh, L values with uh, to the worldwide data. And in this paper, um, Boan, uh, Professor Boan is a very nice paper, give a very uh, nice uh, overview of the L value uh, uh, from the worldwide data. And we also put our values here, the two point from mean PT and uh, uh, mean multiplicity. And uh, we, we find that our L values are quite consistent with worldwide data with a good precision. And the not uncertainties are most come from the nuclear deformations. We also put the PEX2 data uh, result here. The data uh, is above uh, than the worldwide data, but with not uncertainties. So as another, far- Another question. So um, in this model, if you go back one slide, uh, that's a question I always have is that uh, in one observable for the for the multiplicity ratio, you are you're comparing um, you basically extract everything from a, a, a global model. Uh, uh, in also the PT, then, okay, I mean what you shown here is a global mm -hmm. model. Global, right? yes. So the difference, the size, the difference due to final state in fact probably should be considered. Uh, but then the other thing is the, the DFT uncertainty. So this is all, all, hard, uh, all skirm kind of uh, density functional. I mean, according to what, what you just said, if you use a, a covariant DFT, you probably get a, a, a systematic change in, in the L value. I, I just wonder, would, the, would that be something one can check? Like if you get some uh, density distribution from a covariant density functional, and, and, and check check the, the value extracted from for the L. Would, would that be how much how, how much difference you would get? I, I think the systematics is still about the same, the mm -hmm. same line. So. Yeah, but there's a shift in the central, you said according to what you said. No, no, no. Oh. What I was saying is that parameterizations, like the nature of the parameterizations, mm -hmm. the relativistic have hard time getting high L values and they oh, sorry, relativistic have high, have high uh, the hard time getting small values and non relativistic high values. Mm -hmm. And there is a gap between the two. Right. But you think. Uh, but if, as long as you bracket, maybe you shouldn't. Go ahead. Which one? If you bracket the value that you get, you know, you go below and you get go above. But this is only checked using the 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 the, 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 the term. Well, if you if you did it relativistic, you would get above eight, above. 100 or something. Okay. Uh, There's no way. Okay. But about the same line, I would say, still. Okay, so you would get a different L value. You would but just for get different L values, but the correlation line would sure. be about that's the fine. same. That's fine. But there, there basically, there's more than uncertainty, which is still there. Well, at this point, it's maybe smaller than the experimental answer. But you said you would get a very large L if you use uh, large L. You have to modify, so you have the extra terms to the relativistic one to get down. <laughs> Just like in SCARM, you have to extra right. terms to go up. Yeah. It is possible to, to, to explain this uh, this afternoon, like how, how it can this be done? I mean, I don't need to, but, uh, because I, I, I don't have relativistic one. I mean, no, I'm saying uh, just the idea. Uh, Afanasiak, who was here last yeah. week, he, he does the relativistic. Yeah, but we, yeah, we didn't discuss this topic. <laughs> so, let okay. me. So the way we use the initial model is uh, to uh, neglect the final state uh, uh, effect. That's because uh, we assume that the, the one reason is that we assume that uh, the initial total entropy 
and and the final multi policy have the uh, um, uh, very uh, good linear relation, uh, which means the the, the final multi policy proportional to the integer entropy, and uh, the uh, factor is same for the Racine Racine and the corner the corner collisions. That's the one reason. And other reasons, if we can use some final model, final state, uh, with some model with uh some uh, evolutions uh, that's good but uh, you know that's uh, time consuming so sometimes if we talk about my previous situation we always use the, uh, the global model for the fitting or the trend model yeah so that's maybe the reason but if we, you can do some final state uh, some sim simulation with final state effect that's good but i think that's very time cons um, consuming so probably won't change the ratio yeah, probably. Of the multiplicity would be quite different. Yeah, but, but we didn't. Know. We we actually yes didn't do that kind I, of. I think thing. one one thing one could check is that for different approaches, we also have trend model, right? Different mm -hmm. approaches. Uh, if, if people start with the same set of parameter and then check whether you get the same answer, this was done for the deformations recently. In mm -hmm. the we actually come up with this list of deformations. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. wait. Yeah, we do we do some. Do, we didn't check it for the radio variation either. Yeah, it's just a comment. Yeah. We we do do some studies, but okay. uh, you know the particle production from the from the uh, viscosity is unknown for us. Yeah, so this may be. But the, what what that means is that the people who run in their own model, they could just check it because you you probably cannot so, run. So if we, I mean, if we use uh, um, MPT model, but the, the, the particle product is the, the multiplicity is fixed, so we have no um, effect on that. If we, if, if we use the hydrodynamic simulations, uh, the particle production depends on the viscosity, you know, the, the entropy is uh, increased if we include the uh, share of viscosity or back viscosity. So they have some uncertainties. And uh, they also have some uncertainties in the, the theoretical to how to handle the particle production with the viscosity. Yeah. There is no viscous particle production in the MPT. There is. <clears throat> that's why he said that he, he's, that he, he don't know how to fix it because. Yeah, yeah, that's the reason. Based on his movie around when he, when he put in viscosity. But if uh, some, some need to match people have some idea on that, that's very good things to do that. Yeah, so 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 that part of means when you change the shear viscosity, if you want to fix your multiplicity to keep it unchanged, you probably need to modify something else. Yes, that's that's correct. Yeah, I think we should we can continue. Okay. Continue. So uh so far I have introduced two methods. Actually, these two methods are not really as being sensitive. And it's really because we know the charge densities. So we measure the mass density differences. So we extract the neutron skin. And in heavy collisions, we also have some observables, which is also access to being sensitive. So this method is called a net charge ratio, net charge. So uh, in very preferred collisions. And uh, the idea is very simple. So for the collision of nuclear with large neutron sinking thickness, uh, we will have more neutron neutron collisions at most peripheral collisions. We will create the less participant charges and thus less final state net charges. So if we look at the net charge ratios between Rusini Rusini and the corner the corner from the URKMD simulation, you will find that the, 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 the ratios will become larger at very loyal multiplicity range. And this is the neutron skin effect. And actually, the net charge ratios can be written in this formula under the super imposition assumptions. And this formula depends on two quantities. One is the Q, which is the fraction of protons among participants' nucleus. And this plot shows the calculation of the Q in from the Trento simulations. You can see that the Q is larger for ruthenium than the conium, and the different L value give very different prediction of the Q trend as function of multiplicity. 
And another uh, um, the variables uh, in this formula is the alpha value. The alpha value is very interesting. Um, the alpha value is the net charge ratios in neutron neutron to proton proton interactions. And from all the model, we have known the PCR, the hygiene, the URKMD, we get the alpha value is minus 0.35 around that. But if we look at the recent star preliminary data on the light charge ratio, we can extract the alpha value around zero. And this is what we do not understand yet. And maybe some new physics are behind it. So they also have some other uh, uh, observables is also spin sensitive. Uh, for example, the new spectacular neutrons and the idea is quite similar to the net charge. So the spectacular neutrons in neutral central collision are corresponding to the net charge uh, in the uh, neutral peripheral collisions. So uh, the, of course, the yield of the ratio of the free spectacular uh, neutrons is also a clear problem of the neutron skin signals uh, proposed by uh, this also including Jia Yong and uh, his uh, collaborator. So, and uh, the, so, sorry. The alpha uh, yeah, yes, yes, this is uh, for also bars. They so the compare the, the value of alpha. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so how do I? Oh, so all these three lines are produced with alpha equals to zero, right? Yes, we're varying so the L value. So yeah. what the results look like if you put in alpha equals to minus? Here, three. this this plot you in the alpha value is minus 0.4. Uh, so, so compared to, oh, OK. It's so, quite large. It's huge. Oh, I see. So about 1.5 as compared to 1.2, 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 3, something like that. And the points are different. Right? Yeah, yeah. OK. So uh, in, in my talk, I focus on the nuclear uh, uh, neutral skin determinations. Actually, in isobars, uh, you will hear from a uh, very nice talk from Jiang Yun that uh, the nuclear deformation is also different in isobar. The V2 uh, ratios above one indicated that the ruthenium have a larger uh, critical deformation. The V3 ratio below than one indicated that the cornea have a larger uh, outcome deformations. So they have size differences between isobars. Actually, we also proposed some observables, for example, so the three-point asymmetry cumulant, which is also sensitive to the a deformation for, for both beta 2 and beta 3. Okay, let's go to my summary. So uh, the star isobar data indicated that the, uh, the cornea have a single hero type neutron skin and consistent with the DFT calculations. And this may be very crucial for our understanding of the CME baseline in isobar studies. And uh, also, we, we, I, I, I propose several methods to, with precision isobar data and uh, can use the, to probe the neutron skin signals and the symmetry energy. The observables include uh, the multiplicity distribution ratio, mean PD ratio, net charge ratio, and also the spectator proton ratio proposed by uh, uh, Zhang Yun and uh, his uh, collaborators. So this is my talk. Thank you. Okay, are there more questions? Okay, so uh, Hojie, uh, can you send your slides to the, to, to, to the secretary? Okay, uh, so okay. We, can, we may have some more discussion in Abu. Uh, but we are only about 20 minutes behind. Actually, no, it's a half hour. Uh, so, uh, because we, we will have this break. So, so I would say we uh, we should have uh, give uh, Boan one hour. So maybe we have a little bit late for lunch.